Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men put light do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven the lord bless his word in jesus name secrets of rising and staying up in life rising and staying up in life our objective this evening very quickly is like he says understanding what it takes to rise and to stay up in life throughout the month so far we have seen repeatedly that the topmost top is the place for God's children the topmost top the very top a city set on a hill that cannot be healed. We saw earlier on in Isaiah chapter 2 and in verse 2 to 3 on Sunday. He said, and in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come here and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The mountain of the Lord has his repeated verbatim. In Micah chapter 4 verse 1 to 2. The Lord's people and the church is designed for the top. Not just the top, but the topmost top. Somebody who is going to the top shall the Lord say amen. Somebody who refuses to remain in the pit shout the loudest, say amen. Yeah. Lift your hands and say, this, The top is my place, and I am going there. Say after me, say, No devil can stop me from going up. I am going to the topmost top in Jesus' name. The truth of the matter is. God has made the provision for every child to go up. God spoke to God's servant many years ago. He said, there is a place at the top for you if you are interested. There is a provision. But not everybody is at the top in reality. Not everybody, not every child of God is where they ought to be. What then are the keys? You know that there is no result without responsibility. You know that there is no rise without a force. The aircraft does not fly just like that. There is no result without responsibility. There is no rise without a push without a force if i am to rise and to remain up in life what are the secrets number one the pursuit of god the pursuit of god you want to go up pursue god who is the most high you will he will take you up he will take you to his realm. You want to go up? Pursue the most high. Pursue the one who is up. The one that nobody and nothing can bring down. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. And his righteousness. And anything you want. Including going up in life. Shall be added unto you. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and in verse 5.
concerning King Uzziah, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he pursued God, God made him to prosper. God took him up. King Uzziah, like you know, became the most crucial king in his generation. Second Chronicles 27 and in verse 6. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Psalm 42 verse 1 and 2. As the heart pants after the water brook, so my heart pants after God. I am pursuing God. And what was the end of the pursuit of God by David? He became the most important king in Israel. Every king in Israel was referenced. David became the benchmark for every king. Anyone who did well, did well like David or otherwise. Until the city of David, Jerusalem, was named after him. The pursuit of God is the pursuit of good. The place you give to God determines the place you find on it. The pursuit of God is the pursuit of good. You cannot put God first and come last in life. Many people are so irritated and aggravated at the life of and realm of several men, authentic, genuine men of God, lifted by God. The only thing they don't know is the heart of, the, of these people for God. And the sacrifices are what they go through in their pursuit of God. The pursuit of God. Without any doubt, is a lifter of men. What are you pursuing? There are some pursuing money. There are some pursuing women. Some pursuing men. Some pursuing name. Some pursuing fame. There are some people pursuing different things. What are you pursuing? It determines where you will be found in life. The pursuit of God. Number two is access to light and revelation. Access to light and revelation. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When light comes, men rise. Light is key to lift. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We can only experience the same lift if we have the same light. Light is key to flight. What you see out of the world determines where you find yourself in the world. What you see out of the world determines where you find yourself in the world. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 and in verse 19, we saw how the status of Peter changed by revelation. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell, the gates of hell, the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I say that thou art Peter. Because of this revelation, you shifted. Peter's level changed from his contemporaries. The difference between us is not the cloth we wear, but the light we carry. The difference between people is not where they live, but the light they have, the light they see. Very, very important. Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 2, Paul the apostle speaking said, I went up by revelation. I went up by a revelation will always bring elevation. I went up by revelation. It's a good prayer to ask God, open my eyes to see what you want me to see out of the world. Open my eyes to see where you have placed me, where you have positioned me. Open my eyes to see where I belong. You know, the light we function with is what determines even our behavior. Help me, help me, help me. You are, the, you are my only help in life. If you don't help me, you are my only help in life. You can, I mean, you just, you just, I don't have any. When people talk like that, it's bankruptcy of light. Bankruptcy of light. 
When people behave around human beings as if they are behaving around God, it's bankruptcy of life. When people behave inferior with a high level of low self-worth, it's because of lack of light. Someone say a loud amen. This is very, very important. You heard the story of the lion that was born and then the mother died and then the shepherd picked the lion and began to raise the lion and the lion grew among sheep and the lion born to roar born to tear flesh began to eat grass like sheep because he grew among sheep i heard the story from bishop Uedepo as he heard it from kenneth hagen and every time a big lion comes to chase the sheep and all of them will be running plus the sheepified lion lion that became sheepified he will be running and the lion will be chasing them one day this lion went close to the water and saw his face inside the water and he began to run back thinking it was the other lion that came the bible says in water face answered to face so the heart of man to man and the bible says that the word the word of god is water it's a mirror he saw himself in the world he said what do i really look like that guy that chases all of us after he looked for a while he was convinced that it's not like all these ones. So the next time the lion, lion arrived and the sheep were running, this sheepified lion stayed behind and refused to run. That was how this lion, lion came around this sheepified lion, played with it and harvested it from the sheepfold and took it to the lion company to go and teach it how to roar and how to tear flesh the way you are behaving is because you don't know yourself you don't know what you carry i want you to look inside the world the word of god will show you who you are and when you have seen who you are then you can rise like a lion you can rise like an eagle and you can fly in the sky where you belong and roar in the forest where you belong somebody shout the loudest amen Look at your neighbor say, see the world and see yourself in the world and refuse to live among the flock of ordinary animals and enter the company of lions, leave the realm of chickens and enter the company of eagles. They cook chicken for Christmas. When was the last time you heard somebody cooking eagle for Christmas? <laughs> hey! It is only when you find it that you can cook it. He's the one to cook you. <laughs> hey! I prophesy to someone here tonight. Light is coming your way. 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 You believe that? Shout the Lord and say, Amen. The servant of Elisha said, We are finished, for we have been surrounded. The, ma the master said, You don't know who you are. That is why you are talking like this. Who surrounded you? Midianitish army, Philistines army? Who? Father, open his eyes, let him see. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 18. God opened the man's eyes and he saw the mountain filled from verse 17. And Elisha said and prayed, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes and the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. He said, this is the realm we belong. Chariots of fire and horses. 
for them to arrest us they must pass through the fire and his boy says should I smite them he said no calm down all I baptize them with is blindness all of you follow me blind and he took them to the city center in the midst of their enemies and he said Lord open their eyes and they found themselves in the midst of the city surrounded with the people they thought they came to kill he said next time when they send you beware where you go I could have finished you but return back to your master and tell him not everybody is arrestable I decree to someone here tonight the Lord will open your eyes say that amen like a believer the Lord will open your eyes to see the realm where you belong you are saying amen shout the loudest amen give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat access to light and revelation will take you up will organize you from the ground and take you into the sky number three is the walk of covenant the walk of covenant and covenant is nothing but obeying God to commit God to fulfill his obligations obeying God to commit God to fulfill his obligations so the walk of covenant takes people up in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 1 to 2 you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God then the Lord your God will set you on high on high on high do what I say you should do you won't struggle to be at the, at the ground level do what I said you should do doing what I said you should do takes you from the ground to the top am I communicating Deuteronomy ch Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart off, out of your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night so that you can observe to do everything that is written inside in so doing you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success you can't be a failure you can't be counted among failures if you do what i say you should do so every child of god should be a responsibility harvester what do you want me to do what will you have me do psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of his comfort but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night and of course do it and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper so just be on the lookout whether they are financial instructions career instructions instructions unto kingdom service whatever instructions they are just look for them and do them the walk of covenant takes you up the covenant is the ladder between your position and your destination is the ladder you remember the ladder that was set up for jacob in genesis chapter 28 it's a covenant ladder the covenant is your ladder between your position and your destination between your position and your possession very very important the walk of the covenant so the pursuit of god access to light and revelation number three the walk of covenant number four access to divine direction access to divine direction the leading of god is behind the making of leaders the leading of god is behind the making of leaders god led moses he became a leader god led abraham he became a leader god led isaac jacob the leading of god is behind the 
the making of leaders. If God is leading you, you can't lag behind in life. You can't lag behind in life. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. God spoke and led Abraham. And Abraham departed. The outcome of it was that Abraham became the progenitor of the generation of the blessed. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4, and then again, verse 12 to 14. When God spoke to Isaac when there was famine, and Isaac heard, and Isaac did what God said, the outcome was that Isaac became the envy of the Philistines, became the envy of the Philistines. Don't struggle to copy people, struggle to hear God. Did you hear what I just said? Don't struggle to copy people. Struggle to hear God. God will speak to you in the dream of the night. He will speak to you from the scripture just like you are hearing right now. He will speak to you in your ears. He will speak to you by the inward witness. We dealt extensively with that in January. Don't struggle to copy people. Because destinations may be similar, but pathways are different. We may, be going to, we may be going towards the similar destination, but how to get there may differ with individuals. Am I communicating? What God did with Moses was different with how he passed Joseph through to his destiny. Different from how he passed Jacob through to his destiny. Different from how he passed Isaac through. Hallelujah. I prophesy to someone here tonight. Overnight, God will open your ears. He will open your eyes. He will open your understanding. That which you need to hear to change your level is coming your way right now. If you believe that, shout the Lord and say amen. Don't forget this. It is the leading of God that is behind the making of leaders in the kingdom. Access to divine direction. Number five is the release of potentials. The release of potentials the release of potentials proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 proverbs 18 verse 16 he said the gift a man's gift make it room for him and bring it him before great men man's gift a man's gift a man's gift first samuel chapter 16 verse 18 first samuel chapter 16 verse 18 then answered one of the servants and said behold i have seen a son of jesse the bethlehemite that is cunning in plain and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person and the lord was with him they were describing david to king saul he's a gifted man he is skillful his potential is sharp and that took him to the palace your potential can take you where nothing else can i'd like you to know that before this time david has been anointed but saul did not look for him because he carried an anointing saul looked for him because he carried a talent let the anointing what the anointing does for you is to uncover your talent is to expose what you can do is to unveil your your capability is to make your world to know that you can do this but the anointing will not do for you what you don't know how to do am i communicating at all am i communicating at all so it's very very important that you sharpen your, your skill sharpen whatever you know how to do sharpen it sharpen it there are three things to do with potential number one discover number two develop and number three deploy discover what god has put inside you develop it deploy it you have the gift of talking talk correctly you have the gift of marketing find where you can do the marketing work very very explosively hallelujah I told you the funny story before of people who were told to go and market Bible. And one of them who was marketing the Bible, a particular Bible version or something, was his Tamara. And he sold more Bibles than all the people who could not stammer. And they were wondering what was his secret. 
you have a copy of the Bible. And he came to the people and he said, I am here to sell the Bible for me. You know how the stammer talk. And he's talking to sell the Bible for you. But in case you don't want to buy, let me just read it for you. Now, what I just said now is summary. I don't want to imitate him. That's why. But you'll be hitting his head. And <laughs> I won't force you to buy. Just let me read it for you. He said, no, how much is it? Let me just pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> how many days will he take for him to read one chapter? Just let me, how much? Let me even pay extra so I can be delivered from this challenge. And if you are a stammerer tonight, your tongue is loosed. He was using his gift or on gift or even disability to his advantage. So truly there is no disadvantage in life. I heard of a man by name Nicodemus the Papadolos or something. He had a very big nose. Very, very big nose that can take like three or four people's oxygen. <laughs> he, he was making fun of himself and making money. He just, he, just, he just made people to laugh with his appearance, with his look. He made a jest of his nose, of everything, and people paid to hear him. Those may be negative things that you, 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 you but, but many of us, you have very, very positive things and other things. You can find your way from the back to the front if you can identify what God has put inside you. Di di discover, develop, and deploy. That's three things to do with your potential. So, what, is, what point are we on? Number five is the release of potentials. Number six is the release of excellence. When you have found your potential, you don't just release it in mediocrity. You don't just push, you don't just push mediocrity out. You release excellence. If you want to go up, you bring out your best. Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 to 3, we saw how with, by the spirit of excellence, Daniel was made the number one leader in the Persian Empire. After the king was Daniel. Every other leader was under Daniel. The same in Egypt. After Pharaoh was Joseph. By virtue of excellence. We just read now Samuel chapter 16 verse 18. How David found himself in the palace of King Saul by the, on the, at the frequency of excellence. Listen, the release of your best takes you into the company of the best. Hey! Just release your best. It will take you into the company of the best. Don't release mediocrity. Don't release average. Anything you are, you are told to do, just do it blasphemy. Do it at the top of your ability. Wherever you are now, it will take you into the company of the best. Excellence equals eminence. The excellent becomes the eminent with time. It takes you into the company of the best. We might deal with this in more details as the month progresses if there is time. Number seven is the release of diligence, hard work. The release of diligence, hard work. Proverbs 22 and in verse 29, it said, Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? 
He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. See a man who is hardworking, a man who gives his best to everything he does, he will not be found in the company of ordinary people. He will be found in the company of kings. In the company of kings. In the company of kings. Diligence is the major highway to prominence. Is the major highway to prominence. Major highway. If you look at Paul the Apostle in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Labor is the key to dignity. Diligence gives you dignity. See, as thou a man, like you all know, we're in took over the, this weekend. We, we, we left here on Sunday after, after the service, preached on Sunday evening. And by Monday, God saw that the geo of uh, Ia Deboye was in town. And at the crusade ground, light up crusade that he's holding to mark his 80th birthday is ongoing and then it, it said to me he said when we, we came back and sat in the living room of where we sat he said 44 years ago was my first time the last time he came to that place 44 years ago last time 1978 it took him three days journey on the road to arrive. Three days. Three days journey. Bridge where he was coming around or somewhere, the bridge broke. Trailer blocked the road. All manner of suffering. And they were carrying a newborn baby. Three days. When he arrived the town for the program he came for, where he slept, he slept on a bench. 1978. 44 years later, he arrived at the king's palace in an executive helicopter. Landed. Helicopter that landed and waited till tomorrow. He drove from that place, not in a, a car, not in a motor, a machine. That rolls. Where he arrived, he didn't sleep on a bench. I saw everything, and the summary is diligence. Just be at it. Easy come, easy go. Don't be in a hurry to arrive so you don't patronized native doctor. There are so many people who are in, in a hurry to become. So either they become native doctor themselves or they patronize one in a hurry. Am I communicating? Every, at that time, nobody knew him. This time, the chief of the chiefs of the land were all there to honor him. The governor of the state drove all the way from the state capital to come and receive him in the, in the, in the, in the town there. Everything stood still when he came 44 years ago. Who, who are you? Where are you coming from? What do you want? It was small, small children, small boys. I was in that meeting. Of, 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 uh, of uh, 44, 43 years ago. Imagine how old I was at that time. And he looks back and he said, oh, those labors of those days are not in vain. And if you look at some men and people around that had even the slightest impact, then it wasn't a waste. 
Haleluya. 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 Somebody say the Lord, amen. amen. Somebody say the Lord, say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor, say don't give up. Keep on doing the right thing. Reward is coming. The result is coming. Don't give up at all. When he said he was there 44 years ago, and he said I was in that meeting, I said, eh? So for that 44 years ago, oh, it means my age is true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the meaning? Because I used to feel like I'm 35 or 25 until I look at my date of birth. <laughs> and then I look at my children. Say, you people are the one making me look like Hallelujah. They will laugh at you. Your following God will not be in vain. They will not say you wasted your time. If you are saying amen, stand on your feet and shout the Lord and say amen. They will not say you wasted your life. I said they will not say you wasted your life. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Look at somebody by your side and say, I am not wasting my life. I am not wasting my time. I am not wasting my life. Shout the loudest amen. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. The release of diligence. And finally, is the prophetic oil or mantle. The prophetic oil or mantle. The prophetic oil, the prophetic mantle is designed for the lifting of God's people. Designed for the lifting of God's people. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1, Samuel took the vial of oil, poured it upon the head of Saul. That shifted his level. He said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? Captain over his inheritance. Captain over. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. The prophetic mantle, the prophetic oil is designed for the lifting of God's people. Under your God-ordained prophet, under your God-ordained pastor, under your God-ordained mentor, no devil is permitted to keep you in the pit. No devil is permitted to keep you on the floor. That is why to be mentorless is to be futureless. Your father is your ladder. Your father is your ladder to the top. Your father is your feather. Is your feather to make you to fly into your destiny. I speak to someone here today. Any force of hell that has kept you in the pit, that force is broken right now. Any power that is trying to keep you at the background of life is broken right now. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. By this prophetic and apostolic mantle, I declare you are out of where the enemy kept you. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. Lift your hands and say after me, say in the name of Jesus, I am going up. I am going up. I am going forward. No devil can keep me behind. No devil can keep me in the background. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
What is my counsel to you this evening? Number one, don't just claim scriptural promises. Turn promises into reality by the acceptance of responsibility. Don't just claim scriptural promises. Turn promises into reality by the acceptance of responsibility. James chapter 1 and in verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, him being not a forgetful hearer, but the, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. God says he has a place for you at the top. He has shown you what to do in order to access that place. Accept the responsibility of pursuing God the responsibility of looking for light the responsibility of walking in the covenant the responsibility of asking for divine direction the responsibility of releasing your potentials the responsibility of releasing excellence the responsibility of connection with the prophetic and the mentoral oil to take your place at the top don't just claim scriptural promises Turn promises into responsibility by the acceptance, into reality by the acceptance of responsibility. Number two, stop at nothing until you become everything God has designed you to be. Stop at nothing. Everything God designs for me to be, I shall be. Everything God wants me to be, I shall be. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 14 Paul the apostle speaking said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though I had already attained either we are already perfect but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ he said brethren I can't know myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind, I am reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I am pressing. I am not everything I want to be yet, but I must become everything I want God wants me to become in this life. Is there anybody who has such a desire? Is there anybody who desires to rise to the very top then you will stand up with a shout of victory a louder shout of victory